If you're like most RVers, or if you live in a trailer, as a matter of fact, you may have one of these crappy old thermostats. I hate them. They're mechanical. They look like that when you take the panel cover off. And uh, they work off of simple mechanical thermocouple process where if uh, the temperature is um, too cold or too hot. Oh, somebody loves me. They just texted me. Um, it, uh, it triggers a switch which turns your furnace on or off, depending whether it's uh, you know too hot or too cold based on your uh, thermostat setting here. But the thing that I hate about them is they're not very reliable. They're clunky. I've had nothing but problems on and off with this stupid thing. And I can't believe I have not actually swapped this out for something more modern until today actually but uh, let's uh, talk about that and what I did is I uh, let's throw this away I went with a Honeywell uh, unit here and it's uh, non programmable but it's uh, modern looking you know it's a lot more reliable it's solid state pretty simple to actually install you don't have to be a hardcore do-it-yourselfer to do it but the manual is a bit confusing <laughs> because it talks about a one wire, two wire, you know, multiple wire system, which uh, didn't really make sense to me because I only have two wires and my wires weren't even properly uh, labeled in terms of color coding, which uh, made things a bit more confusing. But I'm going to show you uh, how to actually just uh, install it and talk a bit more about this Honeywell. Now, if you're curious about the model number, it's an RTH5160D. So this is what it looks like installed. We're going to go backwards and I'll show you how basic and simple it is to actually install. So uh, my main concern was if it was going to fit um, because I didn't want to have to move this over. This is uh, on Velcro anyway, so that didn't really make much of a difference. That's actually just my um, remote sensor temperature and internal temperature indicator. So that if I know if something's freezing, um, I can deal with things but uh, there you go it's got a backlight it's uh, on metric of course because I'm in Canada so uh, I like to set it at around 20.5 I'm not even actually using it at the moment because I'm plugged into electricity so why waste propane but I've just installed it today it works fine I've tested it but there was a bit of confusion installing it and I'm going to talk about that now the big confusion came with the manual and it said whether you have a one wire or two wire system. And of course I got two wires, but uh, I guess what they meant and they weren't explicit about it is that a two wires means one wires because you know one wire is hot, the other one obviously is ground because you can't make a circuit without two wires. So that's uh, part of the confusion. Of course, my wires weren't even properly color coded. Thanks to how cheap some of these uh, RVs are manufactured, they don't even bother to color code things. They just wire it up and they don't really care. Now, because of that, I wasn't certain on how to actually wire it. If you look on the very bottom, you might not be able to see it, but there's a little switch that you can toggle up or down, whether it says one wire or two wires. So I've got it on the one wire which I had to learn the hard way. And the uh, wires just push inside these little doohickeys, which you can um, you can slip a wire in just by pulling that little toggle back and it holds the wire in. And uh, so it's wired between the R and the W. Simple as that. And you just close that <laughs> and the whole panel just fits on top. So what you gotta do is you gotta mark off where you wanna uh, put the panel and uh, put your screws in and then put your wires in through the middle of course and close this and once you do that you just pop the entire face plate over top and you're done simple as that can't be much simpler and as I said I was uh, concerned that this wasn't gonna fit but it just barely clears here and over there a little bit on the big side but a big improvement in terms of reliability and it's modern looking. It's not programmable, but who cares? The thermostat works, I've tested it. You set it for the temperature you want, leave it. It's great. Now I did find my old mechanical thermostat cycled on and off all night, burning up electrical power from my batteries when I'm boondocking way more than it should have. And that pissed me off. So I finally broke down, bought one of these babies. Now you can get one of these for, I don't know, 30 to 50 bucks uh, US. I bought this at Home Depot here in Canada. 
I'm sure they're available wherever you are in the world. Now it does require two AA batteries and uh, you have to push this button for the backlight to work. So you can't really see it across the room unless you push the button. But hey, it works, it's cheap, I like it. So tell me what you think about this little Honeywell thermostat. It's a very simple upgrade, something that's practical, something you're gonna use, and it might even save you a little bit of electricity. Best of all, it looks modern and it's not clunky like a mechanical thermal couple, you know, thermostat, I just hated that. And while we're at it, if you still haven't entered into the draw for the laptop on my channel, go to the video, it'll be seen up in the cards. Click the video on, go there, make a guess between one and 10,000 and be in the draw for a new laptop that I will send off to you. In the meantime, folks, put your comments down below what you think about this and I'll talk to you soon. Keep it woods in the ground, over and out.